As you know, at this point, there is a very special class of S3 called Glacier, and it is for the archiving of your bulk data. And what's really great about it is that we're going to get great resiliency, great durability, and it is going to be at a very low cost. What is not great about Glacier, keep in mind that we are not going to have any kind of rapid, fast access to the archives that we store in Glacier. So you really want to be conscious of that. This is for archiving where you don't expect to need that information, but you don't want to just delete that information. So it would be great for like records that you need to hang on to as a result of compliance. When you are working with Glacier, you're not in S3. So I wanted to demonstrate this for you because the Glacier service is technically a storage class of S3, but it is unique in that we don't work within the S3 console when we are working with Glacier. There is a way, of course, to have S3 archive things to Glacier, but that's a separate topic. So we're talking about working with Glacier itself. What we do is either at the command line or programmatically or in the management console, we create what's called a vault and then we can go ahead and archive to that vault. It's common to use some type of compressed archive format like zip format as we are archiving into the vault. We cannot do this from the management console though. So I wanted to demonstrate this for you because this is often surprising for students that, oh wow, you know, I can create a vault easily in the management console, but then how do I get stuff to it? Well, let me demonstrate for you. So here I am at the management console to start this demonstration and I am going to go to the S3 Glacier service. So look at this, it has its own management console interface, not part of S3 itself, as we said. So it's very easy to work with. We're gonna create a new vault in this demonstration. I'll make sure I'm in US East one, and the vault name that I'm gonna create is simply going to be, how about the famous test vault. We can enable notifications so that we know when things like a job completes. And this is actually pretty important because what's incredible about the Glacier service to me, again, is that nothing is really built for speed. And that includes even verifying for you that your archive succeeded. What the Glacier service will do is once a day, yeah, you heard me right, once a day, it will run an inventory process against your Glacier and be able to display the archive data for you. So it's pretty interesting just how slow this is. So you would really wanna consider enabling notifications to an SNS topic. I probably have an existing one, so let's see that and I don't. So that would show up if we had one here. So you can always say, look, I want to create an SNS topic right now. And you can give that topic a name. I'll say Glacier and the display name, Glacier will be fine. So we would get notifications on both the success of a retrieval as well as we'll get a notification when the inventory retrieval has actually taken place and we can verify our archives are in place. So you'd want to get as much reporting as possible there. So let's turn on those notifications. So there we go. We have our test archive and notice no way to upload to the archive. So we would turn to programmatically doing it with Java or .NET or some type of library type access, or as I said, we can use the CLI. So I am going to turn to the CLI and notice that I am currently in my downloads folder and inside of my downloads folder, 
I have archive.zip ready to be archived into Glacier. So I'm gonna do my AWS configure to make sure that my CLI is set up with the appropriate credentials and the appropriate region. So I'm gonna fill in this information and thanks to the magic of video, I'm going to uh, show you the completed information for AWS Configure and then we'll go ahead and do our upload. For complete information on this CLI setup, make sure you see my very early video in this course where we discussed the various management options that we would have for AWS. All right, great. So I have input the appropriate AWS configure information into this uh, setup, and we are ready to go ahead and utilize the AWS Glacier CLI interface. And we are going to be placing this archive.zip. We're going to be uploading that now into Glacier. So the first term that I'm going to use here is upload archive, and that is the actual Glacier command that we're going to run. And the first thing that you want to do is the required account ID. But here's the great news. For the account ID field, you can just do a dash and it will use the current account context. So when I did my AWS configure, I provided the credentials of an account that has admin privileges for Glacier. And so I'm just telling this command, go ahead and use that current context, that current identity and access management account information that is inside the AWS configure. So that's great news there. And then for the vault name, we just need to indicate that that is test. And then we indicate the body parameter. And the body parameter is the archive, in this case, archive.zip that we want to upload. So I'm gonna press enter on the keyboard and this is a very small archive for this demonstration. It's not like I'm uploading a gig here. It's just probably, oh, 200 megs, this little zip file for this test. And we can see this JSON output that results. And it might not look like it, but it worked beautifully. So we get the location. And notice it is inside of vaults and test and archives. And then we get this big long identifier. We get a checksum and then we get an archive ID. Look at that for a randomly generated identifier. So it worked and it worked beautifully. But what's really interesting and what I emphasized to you earlier is that if we go into our details for our test fault and we refresh and we come in and look at these details, it says there's no archives here. Yeah, there's no archives. There's no size to report. This would even happen at the CLI. I can run AWS Glacier and I believe it is describe archive. And all you have to do is give the account ID once again. So that would be account ID and it's just the dash. And of course the vault name is going to be our test vault. And it's either describe archive or describe vault. Let's see what happens here. And yeah, okay, uh, I got it wrong there. It is uh, let's see, describe, so it's showing me all the commands that I can use here and what I wanted was describe vault, there it is. So not describe archive, describe vault. All right, no problem. Thanks for the help, AWS CLI. So let me go in and describe vault. That makes more sense than describe archive, doesn't it? And the account ID is required. 
So I have a syntax error there. Yep, I just forgot one of the dashes. So this is a nice demonstration in that you can see just how you're going to get helped along with your syntax in the AWS CLI, which is great. Well, there is the successful execution of us describing our vault. And look, we have the same situation. Even though I know, thanks to the output I received when we did our upload to the vault, that it succeeded, we don't get confirmation of that when we are looking at the vault. And that's because, as I stated, once a day, once a day, it's going to do an inventory kind of collection process and it will list what archives you have in your vault once a day. So you can see where the notifications are going to be an important aspect to see when critical things occur and the critical things would be, okay, when is our inventory updated so we can see it? And most importantly, if we are retrieving this archive, we want a notification that that retrieval succeeded. So the Glacier service, not at all about speed in any way, shape, or form as we saw, but it is an incredible low-cost option for archiving information. And remember, we can archive to it automatically from S3 using that life cycle policy where we could say, all right, if an object has been hanging around in this S3 bucket for so many days, just automatically archive it to Glacier for me. Thank you very much.